The Inadvertent Theist. Although Richard Dawkins has nothing but contempt for theology, often glorifying in his impressive ignorance with his argument, he finds himself occupying an unexpected position of prominence amid the peculiar debris of an abandoned and virtually forgotten science. <laughs> in addition to suffering the infirmity of improbability, the God whose existence Dawkins is prepared to challenge seems curiously a diminished figure. He has gotten the job of creation done. His time thereafter has been spent imposing onerous sexual constraints upon Jewish people, and when absolutely required undertaking a miracle or two. For the moment, he seems to have vacated the universe with a smashing headache. On his previous appearances, he seemed very much like a lumbering robot. One might also expect to hear the lingering echoes of divine clanking. Above all, he is very much contingent deity. If he is here today, he may be gone tomorrow. If his existence were guaranteed, the argument that Dawkins has advanced would fail before it started instead of starting before it failed. And yet, these are considerations long familiar in histor history of theological thought. They form the heart and soul of Aquinas's second cosmological argument. And if Aquinas gives them only a few words, that is because he requires only a few words to say what he it needs to be said. Any conception of a contingent deity, Aquinas argues, is doomed to fail, and it is doomed to fail precisely because whatever he might do to explain the existence of the universe, his existence would again require an explanation. Therefore, not all beings are merely possible, but there must exist something, the existence of which is necessary. The conclusion that a religious believer will take from Dawkins' argument is either that God is improbable or that he is necessary. When Dawkins has established has established serves chiefly as a reminder. Exclama explanations come to an end. And because we are human, they must come to an end before they have satisfied every one of our emotional needs. But scientific atheists should at least be open to the possibility that scientific explanations by their very nature come to an end well before they have done all the work that an explanation can do. If they have not read Aquinas Summa Theologica, physicians have nonetheless heard its music. They have hoped to discover laws of some final physical theory so powerful that they will explain the property of manner in all its modes. The most extreme hope for science, Stephen Weinberg has written, is that we will be able to trace the explanation of all natural phenomenon to final laws and historical accidents. This is the most extreme hope for science for those, like Frant Witzek, inclined to say at some point that that's just how things are. For others, intellectual comfort is less easily purchased. We feel, Wittgenstein wrote, that even when all possible scientific questions have been answered, the problems of life remain completely untouched. Those who do feel this way will see following Aquinas that the only inference calculated to overcome the way things are is one directed toward the thing the way things must be. 
Perhaps in the end, this will prove to be a matter of mathematics. MIT physicist Max Techmark has argued that this is so. The physicist Edward Witten and the mathematician Elaine Kahn 